Hello, this is National Master Spencer Feingold back at the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta with part four of our exploration into unorthodox Sicilians. Today we're going to be looking at the move 2A3 as played by Alexei Bezgadov. Yes, in fact, uh, Alexei Bezgadov actually even wrote a book about this opening. I think it's called something like Attack the Sicilian with 2A3, something like that. Um, he's even written more than one book, so he's uh, an experienced author, and if you are very interested in this opening, I would definitely recommend you to check that out, um, because he has a lot of experience in this unorthodox Sicilian, and um, we'll be looking at exclusively his games with White. Uh, he played well, almost every game that we're going to look at is going to be from the 2013 World Blitz and Rapid Championships. So he played a ton of games with 2A3 in those two events. Um, and then I think there's only like one extra game that wasn't from that event. Um, but I bet he plays it a ton on the internet uh, or just, you know, offhand games because it seems like he really knows what he's doing in this really weird opening. But, um, well, anyways, that's, uh, that's all for an introduction. Why don't we uh, just dive on into the first game already? We have... Bezgadov with white against Harulin, I believe is how he might pronounce his name. Uh, very strong grandmaster, 2650, 2658 at the time of this game. Again, most of these games are from 2013. This is going to be the World Blitz Championship game. And uh, yeah, well, let's talk about <clears throat> the move of A3 first of all. Let's talk about some of the positives and negatives. Well, first of all, it's not a great move. It's not going to win any prizes for best second move that you could play at any position. Uh, it, it doesn't uh, help you get castled. That's one thing that you want to do in the opening that A3 doesn't assist with. It doesn't develop any pieces, which is another one. Uh, and it, it doesn't really attack the center, but it kind of does, actually. That's the one thing that it barely does. So it doesn't do any of the things, like the normal things that you do in the opening. And it also weakens the white squares a little bit. You know, it, it weakens the white squares. When you, whenever you push any pawn, it weakens some squares. So any pawn move, you could say, has that downside. Um, but what about some of the positives? Well, the main positive is that you're avoiding opening theory. And I would say that A3 is best played the faster the time control. So like, you know, if you're playing a one minute game, great, good job, play A3. Just as good as any second move. Or a blitz game, still pretty good. Rapid, it's all right, you know, but in a slow game, maybe not. <laughs> maybe pick a more normal opening. But maybe you're somebody who plays a lot of blitz on the internet, and maybe you play like an open Sicilian with white, or maybe you play some other Sicilian, but just for example, an open Sicilian. And you don't want to give away a lot of your prep. Right, you just want to play some blitz for fun. You might as well throw in a little 2A3 sometimes. Why not? You know, it's not like it loses by force. That's one of the positives of the move is that it doesn't lose by force. You know, and some second moves could lose by force. King E2? <laughs> that might, might be the only one <laughs> in this position. But, um, oh, Bishop A6, of course. Come on, what am I talking about? Bishop A6 loses by force. So, yeah, you know, it's, it's, at, least the, it's you know, at least two moves worse than it. Right, King E2 and Bishop A6. So, yeah, also here's some other good things about A3. Uh, it does kind of attack the center, you know, in a very uh, indirect way. Because A3, you're trying to play B4, right? A3, B4, attacking the C pawn. And the C pawn is attacking D4. That's the center square. So in this roundabout kind of way, it's, uh, it's trying to control D4 a little bit. So that, that is one thing, normal opening thing, that it almost does correctly. Also, another good thing that it does, which I really had to scrape the bottom of the barrel here for good things that this move does, but another good thing it does is that it allows the bishop to have a little hidey hole on a2, which uh, Bezgadov almost always is putting bishop on c4 in any variation, and a lot of times it's getting attacked, and he's got a ready-made flight square on a2, which is pretty good. But I would say of the unorthodox Sicilians we looked at so far, we looked at uh, knight a3 on move 2 from Shabalov, and we looked at Orl's b3 on move 3, as well as uh, 
uh, McShane playing bishop c4 on move three. Uh, all three of those are probably objectively better than 2a3. But it is, it's pretty interesting. And uh, maybe you just play the Sicilian with black, so you want to know what to do against 2a3. Maybe you're like, I don't really want to play that move. It looks a little weird. So uh, maybe you can just tell me what to do with black against it. Well, I'll tell you the best move in, of all the analysis I did, again, I didn't read Bezgadov's book, so he might have a lot of different opinions than, than I do. Um, but the best move, in my opinion, for black is going to be 2g6. This is a very logical move because, as you might expect, the guy's going to play b4, so let's put our bishop on this diagonal. You know, it makes a lot of sense in, 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 this, uh, in this way if you think about it. And I think 2g6 is the best move, and black could potentially be better um, after this move. So that's definitely what I would recommend. Um, Bezgadov has played many things here with white. Let's take a look at uh, some, of his, some of his games here. He's played bishop c4, b4, and h4. Uh, let's look at b4 first. This, I think, is probably the one that he would not like the most. Just guessing that he, you know, he likes the other two moves more. He only played this once against Salem, who is a strong grandmaster. Uh, although at the time, it was 2013, he's, he was 25-30. Uh, I think he's stronger than that by now. Uh, we can see how that game went. Bishop g7, like you'd expect. And now uh, he played knight c3, which is the most logical response. Salem uh, protected his pawn. And then he played g3, which is interesting. Usually he's not playing with g3 and fiancatoing the king's bishop like this. Usually he's playing bishop c4 to a2, as we'll see in, in almost every other game, I think. b6, also, also an interesting move. Both players are playing uh, with some creativity here, I would say. But they, at least they get out all their pieces, right? And rook b1, because his pawn was hanging. And rook b1 is a good square anyway off the bishop's diagonal. Queen d7 and castles. Uh, Bezgadov could consider to play knight d5 here before black plays e6, although he could play e6 after and then knight e3, which uh, would get everybody off of the bishop off of the bishop on g7 out of the way, you know, of, of that bishop. Uh, knight d4 might be the move here in this case, but uh, I don't think it's so bad for white, really. But he didn't feel like doing that. He just castled and then e6 stops that, and then knight g e7, bishop e3. This is how their game went. Rook c8, queen d2, castles, kingside. It almost looks like a totally normal position, right? It looks like sort of a, a closed Sicilian, you know, with knight c3, g3. And then white played a3, rook b1, b4, which I don't really know that white usually does that in a closed Sicilian. I would say usually not, probably. But uh, it doesn't look too bad. You know, he got in a pawn break, and the position looks pretty normal. I would say it's pretty close to even. But black should definitely be pretty satisfied because, uh, you know, he got out all of his pieces, and, and he's flexible. He's got a lot of ideas. He could play with d5 or f5. He could play knight d4. Um, you know, he's got a lot of plans here. And, uh, again, this was uh, uh, Bezgadov against Salem from the World Blitz Championship 2013 where a black did eventually win. But okay, the results of a blitz game, you know, shouldn't really affect our evaluation too much, I think. Okay, let's see, what else did he do instead of b4? Yeah, I think that probably he would, in his book, say that bishop c4 or h4 are better tries. Let's look at h4. So it looks like a beginner is playing white, right? He's playing a3 on move two, then h4 on move three. You know, who needs to develop the pieces and play in the center? Uh, but I will say that h4 is a logical move after g6, right? You know, he's, he's just trying to uh, put a little pressure there on the king's side and open up for his rook. And a lot of times when people fianchetto their king's bishop, you'll see a quick h4. Like in a Grunfeld, for example. Uh, it used to be that it was pretty hot to play h4 on, on move 4 in a Grunfeld, or maybe even later a move 5 or so. So it's uh, definitely a logical idea in this position. And he's played it multiple times. Let's take a look at some of his games. Uh, he's faced h5 and d5. Let's look at d5 first. d5, e takes d, queen takes. So black is playing in a Scandinavian style, but both sides have two extra moves inserted. Uh, a3 and h4 is pretty weird. And black's played c5 and g6. 
So in general, I would say that that should help black. Um, even still, I think it's pretty close to equal, though. Knight c3. This is how uh, Bezgodov's game went. Queen e6 check. That's the best move. Usually in a Scandinavian or a center counter, you wouldn't play this check because you're trying to develop your bishop this way. But in this position, obviously, he's not trying to develop the dark square bishop by playing e6. He's going to play a bishop g7, clearly. He blocked the check. Knight c6. They developed their guys. And then d3. Knight h6, that's a good move. Not the only move. It's not like these are all forced. I mean, he could do almost anything. You know, it's a pretty unusual opening. Bishop f4. And he plays queen d7. He wants to play e5. And he, this move was triggered by him because he played bishop f4. He's like, let me get that tempo with e5 now. Logical stuff. In case you're wondering why black's moving the queen around and around. h5 looks good. And e5, yes. Bezgodov plays bishop g5. I don't really know that he should be provoking f6. You know, I thought bishop d2 made more sense, but he provoked it and then went back. I think that probably black's better if he just plays g5. Blocking the rook. And this is actually a pretty solid formation. And the white position is actually pretty passive here, you know. It's pretty passive with these minor pieces. And it can't really exploit the white square weaknesses that black's made. So I think this is actually already better for black. Not that uh, black's move queen e7 was very bad. That should be fine. Here, Bezgodov played b4, really in his style. He's a very interesting, creative, attacking player. I really like to look at these games, even though you know I personally am probably not ever going to play a3 myself. But I really like his, uh, his moxie. I have to admire his moxie. And uh, b4 is a fine move, although it's, it looks kind of like a sacrifice. But he has a knight d5 trick if you take. He can try to play knight d5 to win it back. Or he could even try to sack the pawn, I guess, instead. Um, <clears throat> this was the game Bezgadov against Hizmetulian. From the only, this is the only time it's not uh, the World Blitz or Rapid Championship. This is the Privolzhsky <laughs> Championship from 2005 where uh, Hizmetulian did end up winning. But Hizmetulian's pretty strong, although they're actually almost the exact same rating at, at this point in 2005. But yeah, I think that d5 is a fine way to equalize or even be better <laughs> with black here if you, if you wanted to play that way. h5 is not bad either, though. I don't want you to think that uh, h5 is a bad move. He's faced that as well in this position. And I think that h5 is the most logical way to meet uh, the h4 pawn push, which we'll see in other variations as well. Uh, sometimes people play h6. I don't think that's as good. I'll talk about that when we get there. Um, but yeah, h5 is, I would say, the most common reaction that, that uh, if you play this with white, you'll find in this position. Bishop c4. And he always, he loves to play queen f3. It really is like he's playing, he's pretending like he's a beginner, right? Play h4, a3, queen f3, mate in one, maybe, right? But uh, okay, his opponent sees it and plays e6, knight c3, knight c6. And yeah, you'll see that he does this quite a bit, knight b5, trying to get into d6. And so they'll stop him, then queen d3. He's had this sequence multiple times. He plays queen f3, knight b5, queen d3. Sort of provoking the guy to move his king, which he does do. This was uh, Gusinov, by the way, who did that. Uh, bishop e5 is fine. There's no reason not to play that move. Uh, perhaps Gusinov was a little bit worried about knight f3. Perhaps. Uh, because it attacks the bishop. But you could play a6. And white just has to retreat, which is kind of a little embarrassing, I would say. If you're trying to look at tacticking your way out of this with knight takes e5, it's not going to work. This loses material. a takes b5. Now there's two things hanging for white, both of the minor pieces. So the only logical move for white would be to play knight takes knight. Otherwise, you're going to lose a piece without calculating. But then we could take the bishop. And now again, there's two things hanging for white, the queen and the knight. So we're going to have to play knight takes queen. But then c takes d3, and the knight on d8 is trapped. It's equal material right now, absolutely equal material down to the pawn, but the knight on d8 is trapped after going on this uh, 
after going on a killing spree here, it's taking everybody, but he's arrested on D8, as you should be if you go on a killing spree. So it's going to be winning for black, of course. So that's why if you play bishop e5, knight f3, a6, he can't take the bishop. That'll lose material. He'll have to go back to c3. Or you could just go back to g7, now that your pawn's not hanging anymore. And both sides just wasted two tempi. White went here and then back. Black went here and then back. So it's all even Steven there. And black didn't have to play king e7. And also white's position is kind of silly. I mean, the, white, the queen on d3, what are you doing there? So this is just very good for black. It's close to winning, honestly. Um, instead, Gusinov played king e7. Again, this is a, a blitz game, so you can't, don't want to criticize him too much. Not that even king e7 is bad, by the way. King e7 is fine. He still should be significantly better here. He just has to take a little bit of extra time to reroute his, or reorganize his king side here, like this. But he got it done, so no problem, no, no big deal there. Yeah, like this. I mean, again, this almost looks like a normal position, right? It almost looks like a normal position. Um, like, imagine the black king on g8 instead of f8. Then you, you would just think it's a normal anti-Sicilian where white played passively, which is kind of what ended up happening here. Uh, white's position is not terrible, but he didn't really get anything going. It's not very complicated. He doesn't have any threats. Um, he just has, like, kind of a passive anti-Sicilian-looking position. You know, this happens a lot when you're... If you're a lower-rated player playing the Sicilian and you're playing somebody with white who doesn't really have a repertoire, a lot of times they'll just kind of play in the style. They, they move out their knights and their bishops like it's a double king pawn opening. It's not as good to do that against the Sicilian uh, because, while well, black has a lot of space on the queen side and, and this bishop's not very good on this diagonal if the pawn is still on e6. Um, although, I actually, I think that maybe Gustinov's next move was e5, which is not good, but I don't really remember. Anyways, uh, this position's good for black. Black significantly better, um, although Bezgodov did end up actually winning it, I believe. Let me just scroll down to see the result. Yeah, Bezgodov did end up beating Gusinov, which is a, a pretty serious upset. Gusinov's pretty strong, but again, it, it was from uh, the World Blitz Championship from 2013, so we shouldn't read too much into the results because it's just Blitz games. All right, let's see what else did he do. Just making sure I didn't miss any variations there. Yeah, just h5, d5. All right, so that's it for h4 and b4. So let's go on to bishop c4, which is what he played against Harulian. Yeah. Um, bishop g7, definitely. And again, here comes queen f3. Right, I, I usually think it's wrong to play queen f3 um, when Bezgodov does it almost every time, I think. Let's look at a couple of alternatives he tried. He once played knight c3 here, e6. This makes a lot of sense for black to be playing e6 against uh, a3, bishop c4, bl blunt the bishop. Then he plays h4 and d5. And this was a game he played against uh, Katarina Lano, Lachno, I think is how she might pronounce it, from the World Rapid Championship, where she played actually a mistake here. She played b5. Her point is that if you take this, she'll give you a big check. And then if you go back, she can either take or play d4, right? Um, it would be better for her like to play anything. <laughs> anything normal is fine. h5, for example. I like to play h5, I think. Um, but anyways, b5, he doesn't punish it, though. He plays h5 himself, which makes sense. But he actually could punish this move. He could take on d5 first, this is important, and then take the pawn. And you might be like, what's the idea of this? Well, check, we'll just back it up. Now, the point here is that, well, okay, if you give up your dark square bishop, that's not great, right? So you'd like to play the move d4. That would be your, your preferred move. Uh, but he could play b4, surprisingly, takes, and knight e4. We're afforded this move because we, we played e takes d5. And so we don't have an e pawn anymore. And so now our knight can move there. And uh, this position is, even according to the engine, winning for white, 
which uh, is not too surprising because black has a lot of weaknesses and is also, you know, not, not that black's really behind in development, but it, it's going to be tough for black. Like, you, you don't want to castle either way, even. You know, castling kingside, you're running into this attack already. Castling queenside, I think nobody would seriously consider to ever do that. And uh, this knight is really good, and you got some ideas already with a big check. The bishop is very strong. Black can actually win a pawn in a couple of ways here. Um, the material right now at this very second is equal. But black can pick up a pawn by just taking, although it wouldn't really be the prettiest. It's double isolated rook pawns. It's not the best pawn to win. Or you can even do something like check, uh, where you have to play bishop d2 to attack the queen, and then take on c2, and then just queen takes, which would uh, win a pawn for black. But either way... White's going to get a ton of compensation, really active pieces, and this is definitely something to avoid for black, especially considering black has a ton of ways to be at least equal, if not better. And here you're giving white a lot of compensation for a pawn, so much so that the computer even says it's winning for white, which is, uh, to me, a little surprising. But, well, either way, I, I would be a little uncomfortable here with the position so open and my queen side so weak for black. So we can do better than that with black, right? Like I was saying, instead of b5, which is a, a very ambitious move that Lano played, uh, h5 was, would be fine, or even maybe some other moves like knight c6 is probably okay, I would guess. But h5 seems like the most logical to me. Um, anyways, the game went b5, h5, and then she played b4. So now there's not that e takes d, and then knight takes b5 idea. Takes, takes, knight a4 takes, takes, and they traded queens and castles. So after all that, it should be pretty equal. Uh, even though white can't castle, it's not a huge deal with queens off the board. And uh, white's pawn advance h4, h5 looks really good here. This is exactly what you'd want to do in this queenless middle game anyway. And he already did it before the queenless middle game uh, had appeared on the board. So that's kind of nice. It's just going to take him one, maybe two moves to get his king to safety. And also, the fact that he doesn't have an A pawn is boding well for white also, because his rook is pretty good on A1. Um, it's better to have a C pawn than an A pawn. Even still, black's position is pretty easy to play, and, and black can get a tempo or two exploiting white's king. So it's not like black's really worse or anything. Um, this was the game Bezgadov against Lano from the 2013 World Rapid Championship. This was a rapid game where they ended up drawing. So, yeah, I think that knight c3 is, is pretty interesting move, and it probably should equalize. Why not? He also had knight c... Th oh, I'm sorry, also had h4. h4. And like I said, uh, sometimes people meet h4 with h6. Um, which he's faced. He also faced e6 here. e6, knight c3, knight e7, just trying to play d5 quickly, like this. Yeah. So is this the same position by transposition? It must be, right? Yeah, I didn't notice that until now. Otherwise, I would have made it the same note, actually. But anyways, he plays h6 here, does black. And then queen f3. Again, I, I, I almost never like when he plays queen f3, so I don't think it's the best move. Uh, why not just play h5 here? This is why I don't like h6 as much. Why not just play h5, f4? Right, the whole point of h6 is to meet h5 with g5, but then we've got h, f4. So you know, I think that's pretty smart for white to do that, try to break open the king side like that. Not that white's better here. I don't want to give you any you know, false uh, illusion of that. But still, it seems like a logical way to go in my opinion. But he played queen f3, uh, and then, though this was against Bolligan, right? Let me just scroll down. Yeah, yeah, I remember. I was like really surprised that Bolligan played the move d4 here. Terrible move. <laughs> Terrible. Even for a blitz game, not a good move. I mean, I get that his pawn is hanging, so that's why he did it. But um, yeah, I mean, you could just play, for example, knight bc6 and try to get in knight d4. That's the way to do it. Knight GE2 would probably be the response, but then knight D4, anyway, takes, takes. Now, you, you, So white doesn't ever have time to take the D-pawn. He'll drop back, and now your D-pawn is sufficiently defended. 
and this is just very good for black. There's no problem for black at all here. And d4 is pretty anti-positional. I mean, it, it makes the bishop on a2 better. It releases tension in the center. It even blocks your dark square bishop, which doesn't matter too much, but, you know, it's something to be said. And this is how their game went. Knight c e2, knight b c6, queen g3. Great move, queen g3. I really like that one. See, he doesn't want a castle now because, again, we've got uh, h5, g5, f4. So he got out of the way of f4 there by moving and sliding his queen over. It's a really good move there. He played e5, which computer didn't like that move. And now that bishop on a2 looks really good, doesn't it? Killer bishop. Uh, probably the best move is h5, but that gives away the g5 square. So knight f3 to g5 is probably providing an advantage for white, which is like pretty embarrassing because he played a3 on move two. <laughs> and now white's better. Come on, what are you doing? So he didn't want to play h5 anyway because he played h6. So you don't usually want to play h6 on h5 unless white had to do something weird themselves, you know, just lose the tempo like that. So he played e5, did bowl again, but then f4 dropped. Really nice. Really nice stuff. Knight f3. They traded these bishops, and he played h5. Yeah. Really nice position for white. I mean, this is like a dream come true, right? White's got pressure on black's position, White doesn't even have any problems of his own. And uh, White's got a, a pretty sizable advantage. They did, they did end up drawing. This was the World Blitz Championship 2013. But uh, yeah, definitely Black has to play the opening better than this. And I, I outlined several ways that he could. Mostly move eight, knight, b, c, six. At this moment would have been the best move. So anyways, h6. You can look at that move as well. Yeah, queen f3 again, not my favorite move of all time. Uh, still, I think, just play h5. If, you, if you're playing this with white and your opponent plays h6, you want to play h5 and then you'll play f4 later. d3, f4. You can play f4 whenever you want. So it, you're not in a big hurry to do that. But I think that's the way to punish h6 generally. He played queen f3. Again, maybe Bezgodov in his book says, oh, queen f3, that's the right thing to do because of this and that and the other. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's best generally. e6, knight c6. And yeah, he does this maneuver again. Remember we were talking about this? Knight b5, queen d3. He loves to do it. You can't stop him from doing it. King e7, bishop e5 still just as good, if not better than king e7. But king e7 is okay. Kick it. Knight f6. This, this position is a little different than the Gusinov game, in case you're uh, keeping score at home, because Gusinov played h5 instead of h6, which hardly changes anything, but, you know, it's a little, a little different. Knight d4. Yeah, I like how he just went back to d3. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of weird stuff, right? He could have taken on d4. That's not so bad. Uh, maybe he didn't want to have to play knight d1 or knight a2 after the recapture. I mean, either way, I think black's better here. Knight g4, not the only move, but interesting. Makes sense if your opponent plays h4 to play knight g4. And now he took. So isn't it kind of weird to play, uh, you know, to play queen back to d3 and then take? Oh, no, I know why he did that. He wants to play knight e2. If, if the pawn takes, he wants to play knight e2. That's why. He was freeing the e2 square for his knight. I got it. Um, yeah, computer didn't like that as much as, say, bishop a2. Just, you know, kind of just any move, I guess. Um, now he should play actually pawn takes, right? He played bishop takes to attack f2. Again, we can't criticize the moves too much because this is a blitz game, so you don't want to be a too picky. But yeah, if he plays pawn takes, he's actually winning. Knight d1, knight e5. He could just pick up the bishop pair. And uh, even though, okay, the king is on e7, that's a pretty minor problem. He just plays rookie eight, king f8 like Gusinov did. Um, Black's got two bishops and a lot of space in the center and is, is positionally winning. You know, again, once he gets his king back to f8, it should be no problem at all. But he actually took with the bishop. Oh, also, I guess that after c takes, he would have probably played knight e2, I'm guessing, not knight d1. But okay, it doesn't really make much of a difference. After bishop takes, his f2 pawn's hanging, so he did play knight back to d1. And now uh, this is the game Bezgadov against Archermeyev. 
from the 2013 World Blitz Championship, where Archer may have played uh, d5, which is not a great move at all. Still, knight e5 is the move. Give me that bishop pair, right? I mean, in my games, I work so hard to get the bishop pair, and then when I get it, I can't win anyway. But, you know, I'm trying to get the bishop pair already. And here, uh, the guy's just handing you the bishop pair. Might as well take it. But he doesn't want that. He plays d5, does Archermev, bishop a2, and he takes and plays knight f6, which uh, the computer even says this is equal. It's kind of surprising. But uh, I'll tell you why. It's because this bishop on d4 is actually a little bit misplaced. After queen e2, which he should have played, I believe he played queen f3, which is worse. But queen e2, which he should have played, you're threatening to trap the bishop with c3. The bishop will have no square, uh, no safe square after that, because I'm controlling e5 with my queen if it's on e2. So this was not the most precise play by uh, Atramev. And you wouldn't really imagine it to be a very smart to play d4 d5 and take on e4 when your king is on e7. Like, why are you trying to open up the center so early and play rookie 8 king f8 first, right? Um, but again, you know, it's, it's a blitz game, so he was just playing some interesting ideas. And uh, Bezgodov did end up winning this game against the talented young Archermeyev. He, he was especially young in 2013, but he was still over 2,500, so he's no slouch. So yeah, pretty interesting stuff there. But again, I'm usually against playing queen f3 here, personally. Okay, so we looked at h4, and we looked at knight c3. Nice, so we, we finished all those sidelines. So in this game against Herulian, he did play queen f3 immediately. Again, not my absolute favorite move. e6, stopped mate, pretty smart. And knight c3, and knight e7. So yeah, still this could transpose to the above uh, notes, perhaps. Uh, I saw another game where his opponent played a6, which I didn't really fall in love with that move. a6, uh, it, it should be okay. It should equalize, you know, but I, I don't think it's necessary to do that so early. We'll look at this game. Knight ge2, d3. See, so he's getting this, basically the same setup here. I know why he played a6, though. He's stopping... Uh, Bezgodov's favorite maneuver, where he plays knight b5, queen d3, and then moves his knight and queen back and forth over and over again. But yeah, you don't really have to stop that, as we saw black is fine, if not better there. Knight c6, knight g7, h4. Again, I like h5 here, but he played h6. Bishop a2, b5, queen g3. This is a, a maneuver that we've seen him go for, queen f3 to g3, especially strong against this h6 move that black goes for. D5, H5, G5, F4. Yes, that's the way to do it. That's the way that, to do it. This is Bezgadov against Chernia, who I don't really know who Alexander Chernia is, uh, but 24.50 fide at the time of this game. And Chernia plays a, a definitely a strange decision here. He, he takes on C3, which uh, is a controversial move at best, right? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that he could do. Computer recommended D takes E4 as the best move, which uh, looks, uh, you know, playable, I guess, but maybe he didn't like knight takes E4 attacking C5, and also G5 is, is a little bit weak. But um, bishop C3 is definitely a committal move. I mean, you give away your, your best minor piece and the bishop pair. Um, and after knight takes, so his point was that if you play knight takes, your knight isn't controlling D4 anymore. So he'll play knight d4 now, and you can't take it with your knight. And he's threatening knight c2, but guess what? It's very easy to defend that with queen f2. Also, by the way, computer says castles for white is winning. Just let him take. Queen f2, that's the most normal move. And he played g4, which is the best move because his pawn is actually hanging here. This is what I'm talking about. H h6, g5 doesn't make a lot of sense here, actually. His pawn's hanging, and he doesn't really want to play gf and let you develop your bishop uh, f for a free tempo there. So g4, bishop e3. He played g3, trying to deflect the queen away from c2, uh, but of course he can just m slide it on over and uh, defend it with queen d2. And after castle's queen side, uh, white should be winning. White's got, like I said, the bishop pair, a very strong dark square bishop, and black has problems. Like, the g-pawn is pretty weak. You can just try to go pick that pawn up. 
um, and, and black will have to either defend it or drop it. Um, and also white has like other ideas like to play f5 and try to break this down with all these arrows coming, you know it's going to be pretty tough. Also, f5 targets the h-pawn, which is weak. And losing the h-pawn is kind of a disaster, because then this pawn is pretty close to queening already. So this is just lost uh, for black, and black definitely shouldn't have played bishop takes c3. Uh, like I said, this is Bezgadov against Chernia from the uh, 2013 World Rapid Championship, where Bezgadov did end up winning. But yeah, I didn't like bishop c3, of course. I didn't like h6. And I didn't even like a6. So we could definitely improve on black's play there. Okay, knight e7. This is what Horulian played. d3. Knight bc6. Going to d4. So we stop it with knight ge2. Yeah, you can see that Bezgadov gets the same basic setup almost all the time, right? Drops the bishop back. And Horulian plays b6. This is uh, the best move h4. Again, there's, you could just play h5. You know, perhaps he was concerned about some g4 move, uh, but it shouldn't be the end of the world if that is played. Then you could, uh, you know, well, actually, you can't even play that here, right? Because knight e5 would be, would be too strong. Knight e5 would just fork the g-pawn and the queen. So g4 is not even playable here, so this is definitely a great time to play h5. Instead, Hurlian played knight d4, which is a normal idea. Takes, takes, knight e2. But, uh, yeah, now the problem with knight d4, though, like, like I said, it's a normal idea, but it wasn't so smart in this exact position because uh, if you want to play h5, now he can play g4. There, you, you trade it off the knight from c6, so you can't play knight e5 right now. So that's actually a problem. And then at least he's, uh, he's breaking on the king side and we'll have some initiative on the king side. And in fact, computer likes white quite a bit in this exact position. So this is definitely something to avoid. Or h6 might be the best move now um, in this case. So like I said, I don't really like to play h6, but I didn't like h5, g4 either. So sort of pick your poison at that point. He actually played d5, did, uh, did Herulian. And after h5, white is better here. White's going to get an attack against the king, and it's kind of hard for black to get counterplay so early. And this is exactly what you want in a blitz game, where you have a nice attack and your opponent has to like figure out what to do. You can just bang out some attacking moves, and they have to like defend and find counterplay, which is uh, obviously not as easy. And also the computer just says white's winning here, surprisingly. Well, maybe not so surprisingly, but still a little surprising that he's winning in 12 moves against 26.50 FIDE, but it was a blitz game, so, you know, anybody can be losing in 12 moves, I think. Um, and in fact, Hurulian did end up riding the ship and, and winning this game. He's just too strong. You can't, you can't handle that rating, I guess. Um, this was World Blitz Championship 2013, like most of the games. But all right, we saw a lot of uh, examples of black in this variation with G6 uh, having a possibility to be better we saw like a lot of ideas where white's playing knight b5, queen d3, kind of silly, moving around and around. And, and it's not that great for white objectively. But it, it's tricky and it's weird. And if black isn't very confident, black could, could definitely play some passive moves and not be better. So, um, you know, it's something that if you face this as black, hopefully you will be confident enough to play the right ideas. And, you know, to generally meet h4 with h5. And, and that kind of stuff, and, and keep the pawns on, on the white squares here if they play bishop c4, and not push them to dark squares like uh, Bolligan did, for example. But all right, let's go on to the next, the next uh, game here. Nope. All right, this is, uh, and I should have picked like a, an easier name to pronounce here. Uh, Bezgadov against uh, um, Gunda, Gundava. Let's just call him Gandava. I can't, I'm not even going to take a stab at that first name, huh? Uh, Bezgadov is uh, going with his pet line as usual, but here his opponent is going to play knight c6. This move, I think, is generally not as good as g6. I think that really the best move is g6. And in the other uh, anti Sicilian, or I should say unorthodox Sicilians, um, I was giving a lot of options for black, and, and maybe I'd say one's better than the other or whatever. But I think that really you should play 2g6 if you're, if you're facing this. 
Knight c6, the idea is to control b4, and now b4 is a pawn sacrifice. But uh, we didn't play a3 on move 2 to not play b4, did we? So b4 anyway. And this will be a lot like a wing gambit. In fact, it, it can transpose to a wing gambit, as we'll see. Uh, which, in case you don't know, the wing gambit is just b4 on move 2 takes, and then a3 on move 3. So flipping the a3, b4 move order there. So Gandava takes. We'll look at that. Uh, there, he also had a couple of games against very, very strong grandmasters here. These guys are no joke. Um, let's look at e5. Yeah, e5 looks like a really weird move, doesn't it? Um, you know, like who would expect e5 here? I, I, I know I wouldn't. But um, this was, the, this was uh, the choice of Igor Kurnisov, who uh, I did a, a video about a... Uh, you know, a great players of the past about Igor Kurnisov, one of my favorite players, definitely. Um, he played this uh, against Bez Bezgadov. E5 has a lot of ideas. Well, for one, it defends the C5 pawn, which was attacked. It defends it by discovery with the bishop on F8. Also, he figures that maybe the guy will play bishop B2 because he can, and he's going to set up his pawns on dark squares to... Uh, blunt that bishop, just like we saw in the b3 uh, unorthodox Sicilian, the or Orals b3 on part 2, I believe. This was a, a good setup that, that I, would, uh, I would recommend as well. So e5 is an interesting move. b5, this is the computer recommendation. I don't know if Bezgadov had uh, prepared this or not. Kind of hard to believe he did, but it is the computer recommendation. So, and it, okay, it's a logical move, attack the knight. He kicked it away. These are all computer moves here, by the way. Bishop c4. And this is a great square for the bishop, because it'll actually never be attacked by the b-pawn now that you've got your own b-pawn there, holding, it, holding down the fort on b5. So Kornisov just plays d5. Yes, yeah, the logical, logical stuff. And they get this pawn structure. Knight b6, bishop a2. See, all these moves are best, and they're playing very accurately considering it's a very weird opening. But Kornisov's extremely strong, so you'd expect that from him. And Bezgadov, this is his pet opening, so you'd expect him to play it pretty well. Um, Kornisov plays bishop d6, which is the most logical move. Uh, but actually, white should be a little bit better here. Uh, the best move is to actually sacrifice the e-pawn with g6. This is the computer recommendation takes in bishop g7, and just saying that, uh, yeah, this bishop is too good. It's not even worth the pawn, maybe. That's about equal, according to the engine, but yeah, that bishop is amazing. I would, uh, I would be a little, bit, a little bit anxious with white about that diagonal. Not gonna lie, it looks pretty tough. You could totally play this way with black. This is especially nice to do this with black, like e5 on move 3, because probably if your opponent plays a3 on move 2, they're not prepared for like every weird move that you can play. But uh, still, I, I would probably recommend 2g6. <laughs> Just, you know, my personal recommendation. But, you know, everybody has their own style. Bishop d6 is what Kurnisov played. They both castled and... Yeah. Computer likes white here. I think that, uh, you know, it's pretty close to equal. Um, White's bishop on a2 is really strong. White can also take the bishop pair with knight takes d6 at some point, and white's knight on e4 is pretty good itself, so you might not want to do that. Um, I think that probably Bezgadov took the knight on f4 here. Don't know if that's the best move. But the d3 pawn is weak for white. That's something that is, is in black's favor. d3 is a weak pawn, so it's not like white is much better here or anything. Um, you know, he has, he has to worry about that problem. So, uh, yeah, just an interesting, weird position, definitely. Uh, where black could do better than this, but, but shouldn't be so upset. This is Bezgadov against Kurnisov from World Blitz Championship 2013, where they ended up drawing. So yeah, e5 is interesting if you, if you want to do something weird. You know, if you're the type of person you're like, my opponent did a weird thing, well, I'll do a weirder thing. You know, trump them. Not the president, I mean, you know, like trump them. Anyways, <laughs> knight f6 is uh, another option. This was actually uh, Dubov's move of choice, Daniel Dubov. 
Like I said, uh, Bezgadov has some experience against super strong grandmasters here. Dubov's no joke. B5? Oh yeah, I just wanted to mention that the computer briefly was recommending move D4. <laughs> Can you imagine playing D4? How crazy would that be? If I was playing this in a slow game, I couldn't help but laugh. It's like all the pawns are hanging for everybody. Uh, but yeah, it still it likes black a little bit there. But okay, it's move four, so you can't really trust the engine too much. I just thought it was funny to bring that up. But b5 is the more logical move, of course. Um, so knight f6, by the way, to counterattack the e-pawn. So taking on c5 and trading the c-pawn for the e-pawn like that it wouldn't make a lot of sense. b5 makes more sense, yes. And e5. And here, Dubov, I really don't know, is, did he really prepare this? Like, did he really prepare to play this with black and knew that queen c7 was the move? Hanging his knight on purpose? Or was he just figuring this out over the board? Either way, I'm impressed. <laughs> if he figured this out over the board, very impressive in a blitz game. Uh, if he prepared this, I don't even know what's more impressive. Takes queen e5 check. So he's trying to take advantage of the weak rook on a1. Bishop e2 takes, takes, giving that rook. And knight bc3. The weird thing here, though, is that uh, white does have pretty good compensation. At first, the engine really likes black, but I, I, I didn't really believe it. I thought that maybe, maybe white could be okay here. I let it chug along a little bit, and after a while, it got down to about half a pawn advantage for black, which is not too much considering black's up in exchange and could even win a pawn on f6. Every move that they played after this was bad. <laughs> Computer hated every single move. So, uh, you know, I, I cut it short here. Um, but still a very weird, interesting position. I think that if I had black, I wouldn't really be going for this. I don't know that I want to win an exchange and, and give my opponent a lot of compensation when there's a lot of safer things that, uh, that black can do and get an advantage in this opening. Um, this was uh, Bezgadov against Dubov from the World Blitz Championship 2013, which Dubov did end up winning. But again, there is quite a rating differential, and it was a blitz game, so I don't know that the result is so important for us. But yeah, I thought it was very, very cool stuff to see Queen C7. I like that. Okay, but anyways, most people with white here, they, or I'm sorry, with black, obviously, they generally will take on B4 takes and knight takes. And this is a direct transposition into a, uh, um, a wing gambit where white will play b4 on move two, then you take it, then a3 on move three, and then black can play knight c6, which generally isn't considered a good response. And I think that transposing to that is not very, not too smart. You know, I'd rather play e5 on move three than do this, actually. Or I'd rather play g6 on move two. d4 and g6. Yeah, most people, <clears throat> when they play it, this, this position with black from a wing gambit usually, they'll play actually d5. But I think that white's better here. c3, and then take it. And knight a3, that's the move. Bezgadov has never faced this in the database that, uh, that I have. Maybe he's played it online. Um, but this is, like I said, this is actually a wing gambit. It's not, it's not a, a true a3 Sicilian. It's a wing gambit by transposition. Uh, knight a3 is the best move. And I think that white has uh, good compensation for a pawn here, definitely. Um, it, you're going to get bishop c4 at some point, um, although you might want to you know, play knight f3 to defend your g-pawn first. And yeah, computer likes white, and white scores well in practice. So this is definitely something that black should avoid. He shouldn't really go for this variation, I think. And, and maybe Gundava knew that, actually, and that's why they played g6 instead, perhaps. Just guessing, I don't know. Kick, and then knight a6, <clears throat> yeah, doesn't want to play knight c6 and get hit with d5. Knight a6, not a bad move. It's probably the best move there, actually. So pretty weird stuff. But black's up a pawn, even though black's position looks pretty weird. It looks like a Grunfeld, kind of, <laughs> right? It looks a little bit like a Grunfeld. You just have to put this pawn over there and give white an a pawn. And also, why is the knight on a6, right? <laughs> well, sometimes knight does go to a6. But uh, bishop c4, I think that's the best move. And it fits uh, Bezgadov's style. Uh, but I think the black can actually equalize here, probably. Or come very close, at least. Bishop g7, that's not the right move. Knight c7. The idea is to move the knight around and around in a circle. Well, it's to play d5. <laughs> but you do move the knight around and around in a circle. 
Um, I didn't know exactly what to do here. I thought maybe queen b3 to target f7 and control d5. But it's not so bad to just play d5 anyway, the computer was telling me, surprisingly. Yeah, check out this variation. Pretty weird stuff. Bishop h6. Yeah, what? But it develops the bishop with a tempo. It hits the bishop on c1, threatening to win it. And I don't think white wants to trade uh, the bishops and, and let black develop knight takes with a tempo as well. So knight a3 was the computer recommendation. Develop the knight and defend the bishop. Logical stuff. Can trade and play knight f6. And black will probably win. I, I'm not going to say win back the pawn. There's actually equal pawns here. But black could definitely win that pawn on d5 um, and be up a pawn, uh, potentially. So uh, I don't know. I, I think that black's doing just fine here. Even though they move their knight around and around a circle, white might have a, a development advantage in the making. But it seems like black's going to get castled without too much trouble um, and be okay. Although I am looking at the move d6 now in my head. And, and that is uh, it's cause for concern, right? d6, bishop takes f7, right? Didn't really think about this beforehand, just looking at it now here trying to take. Because also attacks the knight, so you can't do anything like castle and ignore it. But okay, even if I have to take and then let you take and move my king, even that's probably not the end of the world, because I can move my king and play king g7 pretty easily. And the material will still be equal. So uh, maybe white can even try that. But um, anyways, computer is saying this is equal, and, and it should be all right then. Uh, especially, you might want to check d6 though. <laughs> should have done that before, but I didn't notice it until just right now. So what am I going to do? Instead, Gundava played... Uh, <clears throat> bishop g7. Here's, uh, here's the favorite move, right? Bezgadov's favorite move. I think it's pretty good here. The difference here with the other positions where I don't like queen f3 is the knight is like going and attacking the queen in those positions that I didn't like it. But here, that's not the case, obviously. I think already, if you just look at this position and compare it to what we were looking at in the first game, you could tell that black shouldn't be playing this way. Right? Shouldn't black do what black did in, the, in those other games and just be better? Now, it's, it's mate threatened on f7, and it's not easy to defend. All right, knight h6 gets took. f6, never do that, and that's the ugliest move ever. e6 is what was played. And I mean, what else? f5? Ugh, come on, f5, e takes f. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's a tough position. It's hard to defend mate. e6 was what was played. <clears throat> you generally don't want to play uh, in such a weakening way of your dark squares. Check this out, e5, x clam. And then he's going to bring his knight in here. It's going to be a tough time. It's going to be pretty tough for black at this point. Black's already like close to lost here. D5 is the losing move. Instead should play knight e7 and allow knight e4. Obviously, uh, black didn't want any piece of this. But uh, what are you going to do? This is the best that black can do at this point. Probably Bezgodov would play h4. It wasn't the computer recommendation, but uh, computer still said white was much better here. So I, I just gave that as the move. Um, I think the computer like knight e2 more, but whatever, h4 is the move that you'd want to play, I think. And yeah, I mean, look at this. This is uh, a pawn down for white, but I think the compensation is obvious. It's too obvious. So black didn't want to see knight e4, so they played d5 while they still could. Now on passant can be captured by the queen. Now the knight's not yet on e4. Check out this tactic coming up. This is really exciting stuff. I love it. Knight e4, queen c6. Now he played bishop f4, the normal move. Bishop f4 is a totally normal move, although it gives up the advantage. But white's winning with rook a6. Yes. Yeah, I love that one. That's the move you want to play. That's it. Like, if you see that in an internet blitz game, you know white's cheating. <laughs> There's just no way that they, that they saw this move out of nowhere, rook a6. But you could probably tell the tactical points already, but I'll just explain it uh, just in case you're wondering well, what, what the heck's going on here. Uh, if, if you take with the pawn, it undefends the queen. So knight f6 check wins the queen. If you take with the knight, it's undefending the b5 square. So bishop b5 will win the queen. Uh, it's a pin, and if you take the bishop on b5, knight d6 forks. <laughs> yeah, classic tactic there. So uh, rook a6 double x clam is totally winning. You can't take the rook without losing the queen. 
And so uh, after the queen moves, knight d6 check is too strong, and uh, black should be busto in that position. Rook a6, beautiful move. I'm sure Bezgadov uh, looked at his games after the tournament and is kicking himself for, for not seeing that one, but can't really blame him. You know, you can't really blame him for missing that. He'd be my hero if he played that, though. <laughs> really. He played bishop f4. Like I said, pretty normal move. He wants to play knight d6, which that's coincidentally the point of rook a6. But, uh, yeah, it's not as forcing, obviously, and not as cool, mostly. So that's really the problem. Now, by the way, rook a6, even uh, if it made sense for some reason, doesn't work uh, because the queen's defended, so we can take with the pawn. And by the way, you can't take this bishop because it's still a fork, in case you're wondering about that. Check. Trades queens. He takes here because now the knight on c7 is hanging. So he wins this pawn back. And now it's equal material. And uh, the computer says equal after all that. Although I think most people would probably prefer white, right? You know, black's got a worse structure, and black's bishop on d7 is a little bit passive. But black does have, uh, uh, you know, a, a past a pawn, and is sort of a lead in development because the king on f7 is, is not bad. You know, it's actually pretty good, I would say. Well, I guess you might have to watch out for this check, but it's easy to parry that check. So uh, they ended up, uh, ended up in this equal position. Uh, again, this is Bezgadov against uh, Gun Gundava, where Gundava did end up winning uh, in the World Blitz Championship 2013. So, all right, I had another thing prepared, but um, there were very weird moves that Black could play on move two, uh, and it was just in case we, you know, were, were running too short on time. Usually I go, you know, almost, it's only supposed to be a 45-minute lecture, but I usually go close to an hour. So 55, 56 minutes, pretty solid, I would say. I wouldn't really recommend you to play a3, like I said, in a slow tournament game. Um, but for blitz, it's great. Rapid, pretty good too. The faster the time control, the better. And if you have black, I would certainly recommend uh, the move g6 on move two. Absolutely. That seems to be a way for even an advantage, I think. I'm pretty sure that black gets an advantage with best play it, with two g6. Next week, we won't have uh, a... We won't have a uh, I'm sorry. Uh, trying to think of the word here, uh, 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 another part of our series. We won't have another part of our series, but we will have a lecture. Um, it'll be great players of the past, uh, Adolf Anderson, I believe, that my dad will be teaching that, Grandmaster Ben Feingold. So you'll get a, a higher ranked, uh, a higher titled, you know, lecturer and talking about great players of the past. I believe that that's the case at least. Um, but we'll resume with some unorthodox Sicilians after. So look forward to that in, in two weeks if you're in the, in the Zoom call. Or if you're watching on YouTube, uh, you know, you'll just know the order of the videos and, and not the date that they'll come out. <laughs> but anyways, that's all I have for you today. If you enjoyed, please consider to leave a like and subscribe to the Chess Club and Scholastic Center of Atlanta's YouTube. Thanks. Bye-bye.